happy Tuesday. And all we're going to do today is talk about just one section of today's reading. It's the story of Jesus healing this Roman commander's servant. There's a couple of things that have stuck out to me in a new way in this reading through of Luke. Um, and I just want to share them with you this morning. So I hope that you'll find this as interesting as I did. Uh, the story starts out in chapter 7 in verse 1 with a really important line. After he had finished all his sayings, and any time you see something like this after or um, just a marker that there's been something that's happened before, even though you just read it yesterday, I think you need to go back and like skim through what did, what did we just read? What is Luke talking about? Because he's calling attention to something very important. Jesus has just taught on two very important subjects. One, love your enemies. And two, don't judge others or you too will be judged. And here in this story, we're going to see Jesus put those two things into action immediately. Almost like Luke has intentionally designed the story to read exactly like this, to communicate that Jesus doesn't just talk the talk. He's not just a great teacher. He actually walks the walk and he is looking for people who are living out this kind of lifestyle. So he's in Capernaum and a centurion comes up to him. Well, he sends a delegation to come up to Jesus and he has this servant who's sick. We're told um, the servant is at the point of death and this is a servant who is highly valued by him. That's the ESV translation. The King James uses dear to him. Uh, I looked up the word right before this just to see kind of what the Greek means underneath. And the two words that stuck out to me were precious and honored. This is not a servant that is like under the boot of this Roman commander. This is a beloved, honored, precious member of his family in essence. Servants would have been like your family in the ancient world. And I just think that says something about this centurion. It's like clue one that this guy might be a little different than what you would assume a Roman commander to be. Um, we know that he's a Roman commander. That's what a centurion would be. Um, I don't know how many uh, soldiers would be under his command, but it's a great deal of soldiers under his command. This is easily someone who could have used his power for ill will. He could have commanded Jews to do what he wants and mistreated them or abused them. He had all the power, but look at how he's described. First, the servant he highly values, who's precious to him, dear, honored. Um, but then he doesn't even come to Jesus himself. And it's not because he can't be bothered. I think it's because he actually doesn't feel worthy to come before Jesus. So he sends a delegation to speak on his behalf. The centurion is a Gentile. He knows Jesus is a Jew. So he sends a Jewish delegation on his behalf. And they come and they say to Jesus, not only is this man worthy, he loves our nation. He loves Israel. Can you imagine an occupying force, an agent of that, loving the nation that they're occupying? That, it just, it's unheard of to me. And not only that, he's the one who helped them build their local synagogue there. This man is different, right? He's built different. And it kind of goes back to what we were saying. If you're just going to judge a book by its cover, if Jesus were to just judge this as a Gentile, a Roman commander, uh, one of those enemies of ours, this, this whole story would have gone very differently. But instead, Jesus goes under the surface. He listens to this delegation. He doesn't just judge. He, he hears and invites more information. And he comes to see this man is, is someone really different. Um, so Jesus goes with them, no surprise. I think he probably just wants to see who is a man like this. Um, and on the road, a, another a second delegation stops him before he gets to the, the guy's house. Well, this is because it would have been um, uncouth, I'll say, for Jesus, a Jew, to enter the home of a Gentile. And this humble centurion doesn't want to um, give Jesus any reason to be uncomfortable. So he says, you don't, you don't have to come. You know what? You, I believe not only that you can heal my servant who is dear to me, I believe you don't even have to step foot in my house to do it. 
not because I don't want you to come in, but because I don't want you to dishonor yourself. I don't want there to be any question um, of uncomfortability between you. He, he says, I, I know, I'm a commander. If I tell my men to go and do what they need to do or do what I ask them to do, they're gonna do it. And I believe the same is true for you, Jesus. If you just say the word, my servant will be healed. And I mean, does this not scream humility? This is exactly the kind of person that Jesus has been teaching and talking about. It's someone who doesn't use their power, their wealth, their influence to um, oppress other people or hurt them. This is someone who's using their influence for good, building synagogues, building relationships, loving the nation that they're a part of, um, loving the people under their care, their, their stewards, their servants. And Jesus is amazed by this. Look at what he says um, in verse nine. I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. And I think Jesus in Luke puts this here because this is just the example of everything that Jesus has just been speaking about. This man models not only what it looks like to have faith, but to live out that faith in a way that we all need to take a lesson from. Um, not only does he Jesus heal the servant, um, the, the delegation is sent back to the house. They find the servant well. And again, I just think Jesus is blown away by this. Not even in Israel, not even amongst the, the leaders of Israel has he seen this kind of faith. So here's my challenge to you after reading this story. Where do you need to think about how you use your power, your influence to serve other people right? Just like this Roman centurion, it doesn't matter who you are, you have power and influence over other people. Uh, maybe for you that's in a big capacity, you're a leader of a CEO, uh, of a corporation or the leader of a organization or a leader of a team, or maybe even for you it's your family, the people under your care. What does it look like for you to lead with humility and to use your um, influence, your resources, to help build other people up because this is what it looks like to love our enemies and i think it helps that this particular enemy right is so humble and just willing willing to love the people that he's around don't judge a book by its cover it could have easily brushed off this roman centurion as just another oppressive force don't judge a book by its cover how can you use your influence to help those underneath you. I hope you're enjoying the reading. We'll see you back here again tomorrow.